All righty, we're just about to come up to three past the hour, so we may as well get started. Um, let me just put the meeting notes in the chat, just in case someone doesn't have them. All righty. Welcome, everybody, to the Cuba Community Meeting, the 27th of March, 2024. I hope you're all doing very well today. Um, I've had a quick look at who's here, and I recognize all those names. Um, so I'll just give a very quick pause in case uh, one of you hasn't introduced yourself in the past. I would obviously like to take the opportunity to do so. All righty then. First up then, we'll have a quick look at the schedule. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Give it 1.3 release schedule. What's going on? Where are we? Uh, okay. So we've started the 1.30 provider. I guess the key date to look out for is um, Kubernetes 1.30 is going to drop in about what, three weeks' time. And our feature freeze is the 12th of June with a GA of the 3rd of July. I guess dates to be aware of. Our upcoming CFP. Uh, there's still a bunch. Um, I've uh, about five minutes ago. I learned that there is a KCD Barcelona, which I obviously need to add to this. It is unfortunately at the same time as DevConf in Czechia, um, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but we also have uh, these other ones in Prague, Munich, Zurich, Bologna. And, oh yeah, that's it. And then DevConf in Boston. So all of those CFPs are currently open. And there's also KubeVert Summit, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's go back here. Um, uh, okay. So last week, while we're at KubeCon, uh, which I'll talk briefly about in a minute, um, we had two new adopters in our adopters list. And this is something I'd like to start calling out uh, in this in this meeting, uh, if you'll let me. So Microsoft and the Linux Foundation. Uh, it's the Linux Foundation. It's their training certification. Um, so very nice to see them on our adopters list. I know uh, that the Linux Foundation. We talked about this um, a while ago. So it is really nice um, that they've uh, yeah taken that plunge to uh, to publicly announce. Qubit Summit 2024. I hope you've all seen the email. Um, if you haven't, there's a link there to, I guess, the blog. Um, there's also, if you go to kubevert.io slash summit, you'll see, uh, coincidentally, almost the exact same copy. Uh, so the CFP is open. It is open through a Google form that you can find in that blog link. Um, it, uh, as, as in the past, will have technical talks. And I'm also trying to encourage some of our end users to uh, talk a bit about their uh, journey into implementing Kubert um, with the idea that other um, people where we're seeing a, a huge groundswell with the whole um, Broadcom um, buy out of uh, VMware. A lot of people at KubeCon uh, come and talk to us about that. Um, and yeah, they have a lot of questions and I'm kind of hoping that by um, some of our end users sharing their particular journey, they'll be able to help other people um, in their adoption of KubeVert. So Summit will be online, um, platform to be decided, but it will be virtual, um, and it will be June 25th, 26th. Um, now, are there any questions on anything to do with KubeVert Summit? Right on. Um, so we just came back from uh, KubeCon EU 2024. Um, the CNCF have been really great at posting uh, videos. I haven't had a look today, but yesterday they already had uh, Fabian's keynote um, with Goldman Sachs and um, Ryan and Alay's maintainer talk. I, I've seen it like I think half of the, um, what do you call them, like the regular sessions were already posted. Um, so if you are interested and you do a FOMO, then uh, by all means go through the CNCF YouTube KubeCon EU 2024 playlist. Um, we also ran a Contrib Fest. 
it was unfortunately timed at 4 p.m. on Friday, and a lot of people had uh, were on their way out or had already left by then. But we still had 21 people interested in contributing to open source uh, who had never done so, um, or contributing to Kubevert, or just learning more about Kubevert. And so that was really great to see. Um, yeah, I kind of can't stress this enough. Um, we at the kiosk, we had a half day kiosk. Um, but we still had this, roughly the same amount of people come and talk to us um, as when we've had full-time kiosks. And so I thought we were busy then. Um, there is a, a huge interest in Kubevert at the moment, um, and it's a really good time to be involved in the project, um, especially, I think, as we um, make the last few moves and we start pushing for graduation. Um, and I did want to shout out to uh, Ale, Alice, Brian, Daniel, Fabian, and Lubo, the great sessions and um, many, many hours supporting at the kiosk. Um, all righty. We've got a couple of design proposals to run through and then I'll shut up and pass it over to Jan. Um, a couple things I would like to bring up. New design proposal providing a way to customize generated Multis pod annotation. Um, I, I suspect this came off the um, similar sounding mailing list thread. Um, if you're interested, there it is. I'm not going to take too much time here. Uh, we have a design proposal merged, which is always very exciting. Um, so that's the deschedule support. Well done to everyone who contributed to that. And someone else has added remove roof of the Yes, I added it. Hello, everyone. Uh, this proposal suggests to deprecate the uh, Rootful VM features on 1.3 and remove it on 1.4. It was postponed from 1.2 at the request of certain community members. I just wanted to give a heads up to everyone and ask again if it is still OK with you. And if not, please chime in and say your opinion at the PR or on the mailing list thread. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, I was talking to a couple of people at, at the kiosk last week um, who when I, were describing some of the security elements and um, this like perfectly fit their use case. And they're really, really, really happy to hear that we are root, rootless by default. Uh, so yeah, chime in if you can. Um, and I think that's it for me for a little bit. And I can pass it off to someone else. Yeah, I think uh, I'm the next question. So uh, my question is regarding my PR for adopting s x architecture. And specifically, what level of initial CI would be needed to start merging some of that? So the background there is um, we are working on, of course, getting the full CI. So we don't want to just leave parts of the CI out. But um, it's also not something we can just do in one go. So um, we already have a cross-compile job. Um, we have a unit test job run. Uh, ready to go. We have a cluster already added to the CI to run it, but um, that's where the trouble starts. So the cluster is currently an IBM Cloud cluster, so it's itself already VMs, which is not good for running end-to-end -end tests since then we get into nested virtualization. Um, another part uh, is that we don't have Bazel officially supported on S390X. So uh, another team from IBM is working on getting Bazel support, but uh, Bazel uses boring SSL instead of open SSL, which is not supported on S390X. Changing that to open SSL breaks some other tests there. At least that's my latest status I got from that. So um, I don't know when we will get Bazel officially supported. So we do have workarounds. So we can build Bazel. We have patches for specifically the version we currently need for Qbert, but also for other versions. So we can build it ourselves. 
of course, IBM being a big company, I'm not actually allowed to publish a Bazel binary myself. So if I would need to publish it, um, that's a big uh, step for us since uh, IBM's requirements mean we would need to have full support for that Bazel binary, even if we just use it inside Qpert. We would still need to publish CFEs for, I don't even know how long, but uh, yeah. So like IBM brand doesn't allow us to just publish a binary and not have the full support train on it that would otherwise damage the brand if there is anyone saying, hey, the Basil you published two years ago has a, a feed, uh, some security problem in it. Um, and the other problem with, I already briefly mentioned it, the current cluster is a VM cluster. Um, we have plans to build a bare metal cluster, but of course there aren't any uh, bare metal IBM Zs you can rent and um, for providing the cluster, we are working on it, but uh, we need to create a whole new environment for where we can host it since otherwise, again, compliance tells us that we can't just expose a cube API port in any of our current Zs. So uh, we need to work with compliance there to get that approved, which is as anyone can tell you with bureaucracy, not a fast process. Um, uh, and, Ayan, uh, I have a yeah. question. Um, how do you run the unit test? Uh, is it like a Golang? Uh, I imagine it's just Golang, right? Yeah, so uh, currently we run the test with make go test. Um, there is one problem which I have a fix for, which is that in go test, there's a race condition since they test with the race flag. Um, there is in one of the test cases, a race condition, but I have a PR open who fixes that. Um, yeah, I think sorry, that was uh, on the agenda two weeks ago. Yeah, I am not worried about this, but where is go coming from? I mean, you have installed that it in, into the VM, right? It's not like a containerized version. It is the containerized version from the builder image. So if you, okay, I mean, the, I think the original CI runs make basal test, which mm -hmm. runs also inside the builder container. Um, so it's just the go version from the builder container. I see. Okay. At least, uh, it's, uh, it's the same version. So it's already something, something good. I don't know, I, I just review your PRs. There are several uh, questions. Um, do you think we need to, to enable everything? I mean, like, uh, for example, you have um, build for NFS or stuff like this. Uh, yeah, I, when I got through that, I just at first enabled everything to see what works. But I think since we don't have end-to-end -end tests yet, it makes more sense to only enable the core images. Yes, we need exactly. like word launcher, word API. I would also like the Alpine demo because it's mm -hmm. already built and it's nice to test that the cluster is working. But other than that, I think I'll go through it and see what I don't need and just drop those for now. Um, yeah, it will make the PR with so smaller. Um... Yeah. Another plan I discussed also with Brian a bit is that since one of the problems is the RPM depth, since S390 RPMs aren't currently caged, um, that I split that one out as well. So we can go ahead and merge that and have the R S390X RPMs caged. That way we don't need, or I don't need to pump QEMU versions every month mm -hmm. or so till the PR is merged. Um, of course, uh, I would wait until the current QEMU and libword pump is merged, since okay. that's make it makes all everything easier. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Brian. Do you think we could cache uh, the RPMs at least for facilitate uh, the build or? Uh... Yeah, maybe it will be easier for you. 
yeah, at least caching the RPMs shouldn't change any Kubeford functionality since it's it will make the make RPM depths yeah. job that periodically runs, I think, a bit longer. But other than that, it shouldn't affect anything except the storage bill. Uh, the other thing I personally am a bit uh, so it it should it should be similar as much as possible to ARM. So like also installing the tool chain into the Docker files and that I mean for the cross build and that for S three ninety we need to install in the container. I don't know. Do you think you could you could fix that and make it similar to ARM or? Uh... Well. I can make it similar to ARM, but only by making ARM similar to my approach. Mm. Since the problem is that ARM has already built tool chains they provide. So I think when I last looked at it, it's actually a bit old, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but we don't have that for s So We don't have just a tar file you can download where every needed GCC and GCC library is, is in there. So um, I can change it that ARM also uses our approach to the tool chain that it's similar, but I think that adds about 200 megabytes or 100 mm -hmm. megabytes to the builder image for x86. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually I'm thinking, I don't know, but this uh, I would like the opinion from Brian and Daniel if he's there, if we should just inst create an additional image and install the um, cross build there. And when S390 is required, then we pull the additional layers. It's an it's uh, an image additional image to maintain, but at least uh, we don't get uh, the cross build uh, packages for for um, standard. Just to uh, jump in, um, Brian says in chat that his headset yeah, has him on mute. Yeah. Okay, that sounds okay to him. Brian, how, how does it sound for you uh, having two images? Is that too too much uh, work? Because uh, if we separate, um, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Jan's team could own the extra image, for example. Yeah. So you mean having an extra image for just com cross compiling it for S390X or? Yes. So like you, you do a, from the builder and then you install there the cross compilation. So for cross compiling S390, you pull the additional. Additionally, the new image. So the new image should have just uh, be the standard builder plus uh, the the um, the cross build for for S three ninety. Yeah, I would so need. I, we... I would need to check how to do that in the build logic itself. That we suddenly go into a different Im uh, run a different container image. Um. Yeah, but that Might will be, be just for S390 builds, so. Yeah, but it's building, I think, in one container, currently all images at once, if the make, cross uh, make job just runs with build arch for all of them. So for example, in the release.sh, it's setting build arch for all of them. So then it starts, I think, the container and runs the basal build for every arch one after another, so we would need to split that there that S390X gets started afterwards in its own container, or alternatively checking beforehand if there is any cross compiling to be done, and then starting into a specific cross compile image instead of the normal builder image. Maybe you can discuss this with Brian offline, but I don't know. I yeah. still would like to separate uh, and isolate a bit to build. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, feel free to create maybe a chat. Uh, I don't know, maybe with me, Brian, and uh, if you need something. Yeah. Because in this way, it's also a bit clearer the ownership. So. And for posterity, yeah, Brian's also just to share the link as well. You can specify the builder per job. Yeah, but I think the current job runs already inside the builder for all Archer sets. But yeah, it's just a design I need to look over before I can say how easy it would be. It's a, it's definitely possible. Hey, hey, Jan, um, or, or anyone else as well. I mean, uh, would it be maybe more straightforward for you if we if we have additional support to build the images without the basil? I'm wondering if, like, how likely are you to getting the basil done, right, for the S3 uh, 90X? So for official basil support, I can't actually say that since that's a different department doing the work. So I don't know about that, but I know that in the past, the Basel community was not that open. Um, but yeah, I think for building it just in Golang, there's already scripts for building the binaries in pure Golang. So that's not a problem. Um, the problem is building the container images since as far as I can see, there are no Docker files for them since they are built purely by Bazel, which is good because it can pin the RPM versions that way. But I'm not sure how good it would be then to build the images without Bazel on S390X. I think an easier way would be to use the option to just replace the Bazel the builder image through an environment variable and have a private uh, builder image for S390X, which includes Bazel. That's a bit not good for open source, but I can document how to build that. Um, but as I said, my problem isn't building Bazel or putting it inside the builder image. It's uh, my inability to actually release a Bazel binary that's available. Um, so as long as the image is not publicly available, I can build and maintain that without a problem. And it only needs to be available to the uh, test cluster for S390X. It doesn't need to be available for the rest. Yeah, I think that, that, uh, that is possible as well. Um, yeah, I, I thought about like having a dedicated script for building the S390 images. Uh, I mean, you would need to be, uh, you would need to maintain it, but for example, you, you can still reuse the the stuff the Basil is using, such as the Basil DNF, because that's just uh, the Go binary, and the uh, Basil is just uh, acting as an orchest orchestrator for it. I have looked at it that way. I but it, I need it to would look be at it would be additional work on, on your side. Yeah. And maybe it would be, you know, uh a be bet better way for us if we have a get the S390 machine and would need to debug some programs. Yeah, I'll, I need to bring that up. I mean, we had a discussion in the past if we wanted to go rewriting every build script so it doesn't need Bazel to, uh, and supporting them or building Bazel and it looked at the time that Bazel was easier. But yeah. I'll bring that up and take that with me.
Cool. Well, thanks for bringing that up. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get that result. Um, and if there's nothing further to add, I will move on. We can uh, run through our reviews. Um, pull requests, none. That's, I think, my favorite part of this meeting. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for everyone for maintaining lots of pressure on those reviews. A uh, couple of things in the mailing list. I want to bring out a, um, another design proposal. I don't know why I didn't add this to my design proposal section. Maybe I did. Um, ah, because it's not, that would be why. Um, so this is an enhanced interface configuration on Kubert, someone from Diamante. Um, so yeah, if this interests you, if it piques your curiosity, uh, you can find it on the mailing list, linked in the agenda. Uh, Miguel's already thrown in some thoughts or questions. Um, we've got something from Morel, I thought. Is Aurel still here? Um, Aurel, did you want to quickly speak to this in 50 years or less? Yeah, yes, sure. Currently, uh, in most of the web hooks, we do an open API schema validation like in all of the mutating web hooks, all of the validating web hooks. And I was wondering what is the reason for it? Because as far as I understand, a Cube API should already do it since a certain version and i was wondering whether it is redundant or not and that's it just looking for answers that was more than 50 words but i'll let it slide because i like you um yeah does anyone have any answers for him while we're all here. So uh, I would recommend uh, to have a look at the Nashon uh, for email thread where there was a proposal to basically re remove the validation and move it to CRDs. And there we mentioned one of the possible issues on upgrades where right now we disallow any new API fields to appear in the objects during the uh, during the upgrade and if we would remove this uh, validation from the webhooks then uh, this would be broke and uh, possibly uh, uh, possibly it would be an upgrade issue but that being said the tooling in the api server was improved and maybe we can uh, just uh, switch the way we do upgrades and that could uh, solve the issue Thank you. I got two bugs. If I can get my mouse back, um, can I bring up networking when stopping a VM and starting it again? Uh, let's just have a quick look to make sure no one's jumped onto this. I like that they've linked to similar issues. Um, do we have anyone from the networking team? Is this a networking issue? I don't see anybody from networking, but uh, it's basically a expected behavior. We can uh, we can probably pitch um, the CubeMac CubeMac pool project where they can have a persistent Mac. Okay. Oh, no, actually, Aurel is from the networking team, so he, he, he may actually add some information. I can take it offline with the team and go back to you. Excellent. That sounds like I am CCing you. Wonderful. And I'm pretty sure I just opened. Ah. Um, same except restored by Valero. So is this the same 
a potential solution, and I can tag URL in this as well. Can you move a little bit uh, down? Boop, boop, boop. Bit more. Maybe a little bit more. A little lower. I mean, yeah, I would guess it's the same issue. You can tag me and I'll take it offline as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much. All right, that brings us to the end of what we've got on this piece of paper. I'll just run up real quick see if anyone's added anything they have not although i will once again thank the crew who were at kubecon uh it was it's always a pleasure to see people who um contribute to the um to the project and especially in the in the the, the grand environment of something like kubecon um, um but yeah and especially um especially once again just thanks for helping out and talking to so many people um, that brings us to the end of this meeting. I'll give you five seconds of silence in case anyone has a, um, a random question or a comment they'd like to make. Ad hoc is probably a better word than random, but it sounds like we're all content. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for being here, for being part of the project, and for, for being involved. Um, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, um, a nice weekend, and we'll see you all here next week, uh, next Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.